So today I'm going to talk to you about the Little Ice Age again and specifically about snow and ice staying on the ground during the summer because people don't seem to believe it simply because unless you live in certain small isolated areas of the world where not many people live anyway then it's not a regular occurrence for you. But first I'm going to show you a little short video clip which I found of the Japanese 15 metre snow floor which I think you might find amusing. Now this is the snowfall that you're used to seeing. It's the snowfall has ended, it's a day or two later, the snow has started to melt, and there's very little of it about. And obviously this is not going to last through the summer. But even in this picture there are some things you can notice. First thing you can notice is there are areas like this which are just pure ice. and there are areas which are obviously still white snow. And which areas have melted first? And the answer is the pure ice, the places where people have stepped. And the reason for that is that snow and ice are both very transparent to light. Snow reflects a lot of it, but the ice allows the light to penetrate through to the ground underneath the ground being dark absorbs the light energy, converts it to heat and melts the snow and ice on the top. And that's the way it really works. Now, there are a lot of websites that will tell you snow melts from the top, the sun strikes the snow and the snow melts from the top and yeah, <laughs> doesn't actually work that way and it's very easy to see why in this series of pictures from Scotland. Here we have a large area of snow in the Cairngorms that is still there in the summer and you can see it's summer. We have the tourists here, t-shirt, shorts, nice sunny day and uh, photographing his girlfriend who's also got shorts on. And this whole area here is not, as some other pundits would say, in shadow for most of the day. It is in fact in the light for most of the day, yet the sunlight is not melting it. And there are reasons for this. The number one reason is that it's too thick. The sunlight cannot penetrate it to strike the ground underneath and warm the ground up. And the second reason is it's a large enough expanse to give you a cold blanket effect. Now what do I mean by this? Well, if you hold your hand above an ice cube tin, you'll find that you can sense it from up to six or seven inches away and what you're feeling is the cold blanket of air over the top of it, which is trapped. Cold air falls, cold air doesn't want to go anywhere really. And over a large area of snow like this, you'll have one of these cold blankets that insulates the snow from the warm air. Now snow in fact melts from the bottom up, especially if it's thick snow. And um, here we can see some examples. And these odd dimples 
are caused by the fact that the ground underneath is uneven. This means that the snow gets heated unevenly by, reflect by heat rising off the rocks underneath. And you can't really see a scale on this picture because these could be any size, they could be several yards long, they could be pebbles. But the next picture will show you what the scale is. And here we are. We have this kind gentleman here who's crawled into the melt gully underneath the snow and is showing us just how big these things are. So here you can see you have light that is coming in from the top, it's hitting the ground and warming it up. And at some stage it's warmed it up to melt away this big channel. Now, this is problematic. If this does not melt and snow falls the next year, then this gully will still be there. And this is one reason why old snow is very dangerous to cross, especially if you're in a vehicle, because you have all these weaknesses underneath. And these gullies also act as an insulator. They insulate the snow from the ground. So the more of these you have, the less chance that your snow is actually going to melt. And if they're still present when it snows the next year, then guess what? Your snow's got even less chances of melting because less light will be coming through. And what little warmth is provided by the ground is insulated by these gullies. So, when snow does lie on the ground in the summer, it's protected from being melted, if it's a very large area, in a couple of different ways. The first way is the cold blanket, so warm air can't disturb it too much. The second way is it reflects most of the sunlight coming in. The third way is it insulates itself from the ground that's being warmed by the sunlight travelling through it by creating these gullies. And this is how glaciation starts. Now don't panic, I'm not suggesting that glaciation is actually going to start in the Little Ice Age, although the conditions are right for it to do so. What I'm saying is that this is how an ice age does start with snow that won't go away and the natural ways that snow has of protecting itself from being melted in the summer um, mean that once you've actually got it and don't forget in the ice age we had snow miles thick that it's very very slow to melt so if the world as a whole is colder due to orbital factors and due to the sun reaching its minimum then the chances of that snow not going away increase significantly and the more snow there is that stays the more snow you will get that stays the next year and it will build and this is what I'm talking about and this already happens in small areas of the world without having a little ice age. It happens occasionally in Scotland, as you see here. So, don't just dismiss snow staying in summer as being a fantasy. It already happens. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Well, you could subscribe to Arduinotronic or just go jump in a lake.